today's webinar, we are going to cover a lot of ground, and by the end of today's presentation, I hope that you are familiar with a new set of tools and components that can provide substantial help to develop precision localization and precise navigation in an autonomous system using inertial navigation techniques. The technologies discussed in this webinar are all available today. They can be tested out by simply installing appropriate software and running online tools on the developer, Asina developer website. Uh, while the tools presented today will vastly increase your development efficiency, implementing precise navigation in an embedded application is not simple. So I hope you stick with me through this presentation and I look forward to your questions at the end. The presentation will review applications for precise um, navigation and autonomous systems and then introduce sensor fusion and inertial sensor theory and how to do appropriate application specific simulation. Uh, we will introduce Asina's online simulator tool and give you a quick overview of how to set it up and use it. We'll then move from the simulation world to the real world and how to install and develop algorithms on real IMU hardware. The Open IMU hardware is a unique hardware platform that combines precise inertial navigation capabilities with an open source platform. And so you'll see how directly how to use that. And finally, we'll wrap up with a quick lab and demo that shows you once I've developed an algorithm, installed it on Open IMU hardware, how can I collect data and analyze data from that quickly and conveniently using open source tools. Why would we want to develop a precise navigation application? Well, it turns out that precise navigation and control is increasingly common in a new world set of um, real world applications. And some of these example applications include advanced driver assistance systems, um, also known as autopilot technology for automobiles, um, and new classes of drones such as inspection drones which will fly very close to complex structures and need to operate in precise mission environments, and delivery robots. We all look forward to the day when, when we can order from the grocery store and have a delivery robot bring us, bring us the food directly. All of these really require quite precise navigation when you think about it, and they need to do it with a wide variety of sensors. So they really challenge um, traditional norms of what GPS or GNSS, INS navigation is all about, and fuse together a wide variety of sensors. And, and that's something that inertial navigation is really great for. It's really a great sensor fusion technique. So a wide variety of new sensors are being developed, um, including uh, high precision cameras, 3D cameras, LIDAR sensors, radar. Um, GPS is increasingly becoming available in high accuracy flavors, uh, odometer sensors, HD maps, um, and HD mapping technology. All these um, technologies are really crucial for precise navigation, but each one of them has certain um, certain challenges with it that maybe make the sensor not work in certain conditions or reduce accuracy in certain conditions. And the benefit of inertial navigation technology is that it, it can help flywheel through or um, glue together these different sensor strategies in a, in a cohesive way. IMUs don't have any external dependence or surface, so there's no photons coming in, there are no radar waves being reflected into it, so that makes it pretty much impervious to jamming, it's weather independent. Um, but as it is based on acceleration and gyro data, it will over the long term drift. So that's why you need to do fusion. You combine it with the sensors that provide static performance um, and use the IMU to provide dynamic performance and stitch the two together. Um, the, the challenge with this type of algorithm development is, is pretty complicated, and that's really what we're here to talk about, how to make that development of such systems that, that hybridize or fuse inertial navigation with sensors like LiDAR uh, more straightforward. And the way we've built that to make that more straightforward is we've borrowed a concept that's very popular in web development and audio and video and mobile, which is that of an open platform that consists of a number of key pieces. And the two pieces we're going to focus on today include simulation and um, open source based code that can be used to compile and download algorithms into our OpenIMU hardware. We also are developing a community reference data and forum as well as additional extensions to our platform 
that will help uh, complete the circle of making uh, development for navigation applications easier and more user friendly. Why is inertial navigation hard? A lot has to do with the fact that we start with signals that are really derivatives of what we want to measure. So typically in navigation we're concerned with position. Um, we're also often very concerned with orientation where a device is pointing and what it's looking at. So to get that from inertial navigation we start with signals like the rate gyros that measure the rotational rate and then we integrate that to orientation to get where the device is pointing. To get to position we start with the accelerometer signals but those accelerometer signals both include the linear motion of the platform but also a component of gravity. So we have to use the orientation we first computed to correct for gravity, remove gravity, and then we can integrate the local level acceleration into velocity and then the velocity into position. And um, as there's a couple of integration steps here you can, get, you can get really significant drift if you don't manage errors properly. And because the outputs are um, related you know, mathematically to the inputs but through a fairly complex algorithm it's hard to track down where errors are coming from and how to deal with errors and that that really leads you to using simulation as a key step so the first thing we're going to cover is how to do quick and efficient inertial navigation simulation using Asina's uh, tools okay so let's talk in detail about how to run effective inertial navigation simulation and to do that, we're going to hop on over to our developer website, developers.asina.com, where you can create and build an online inertial navigation simulation completely online. The first step to do this is to uh, go ahead and join the site and then create a virtual IMU. So let's do those two steps. Um, in terms of joining the site, we offer, you can join by email or you can also use your GitHub to uh, create an account. I already have an account so I'll just go ahead and log in and um, it's sort of set up like any standard website with a, a profile page and log out over here notifications um, on a bell and so forth so the first step in doing a simulation is to build a virtual IMU and we made this really easy um, where we have some default IMUs a high accuracy middle accuracy just the same as the open IMU 300 uh, hardware which we'll talk about soon and a low accuracy IMU. You can make the device a six axis device or include a three axis magnetometer and make it a nine axis device. You can specify individual parameters for bias, instability, and random walk. These are parameters you get directly off the data sheet or you can use our default values that are created associated with these default uh, IMUs. So I've already created an IMU model um, called IEEE webinar model. It is the uh, parameters on it are the same as the Open IMU 300, and I've given that uh, IMU both a magnetometer and GPS capability. So the next step is then to create a motion trajectory, and this is where you think about, okay, am I interested in drones, or am I doing a delivery robot, or a car, and what kind of trajectory is typical of what what the vehicle is going to do in terms of how fast is this going to go, where is it going to go. And you can actually create that trajectory profile which will then in turn generate simulated accelerations and rate signals and GPS data and magnetometer data which will then be processed through your algorithm. So in terms of generating the motion trajectory this step can get a little bit tedious. Um, we have some built-in preset motion profiles um, and you, you know, let me give you an example of a, of a, of a flight test. It might consist of 10, 10 steps. Um, this happens to be a drone zigzagging back and forth over a field, as an example. And um, any, each step has a, a command, this, this motion command type. Those commands are defined here. They kind of talk up the command specifies how the vehicle is actuated in terms of its change in velocity or change in attitude. Uh, there's a lot of documentation about this on our website on how to create these individual commands. Okay, so once you have a um, motion command file, you're ready to actually run the simulation. So in running the simulation, you specify the sensor model, the trajectory, um, and then the algorithm. And the algorithm, we offer a number of default algorithms if you use our command line tool, you can, you can integrate your own algorithm very easily. So this whole project, there's a web version, um, but behind the web version is a set of Python tools called GNSS, INS, 
sim and that's available on our github and you can actually download that directly use it and go even deeper in terms of customizing the simulation let's go ahead and run an online simulation um, to run an online simulation I just picked the error model that uh, our sensor model that I was interested in the motion generation file um, in this case I'm just this is a simple turn test where a vehicle pulls out into an intersection and uses um, we're going to use free integration to show how with just an IMU alone I can track through a, 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 a typical vehicle crossing turn so pulling out of an intersection and doing a left hand turn um, and I can then go ahead and run that um, if I go to my results page you'll see that simulation is now processing um, in order to speed up and save time I've already uh, run the simulation so we can go ahead and directly look at um, the error and, and look at the, the results when you plot position by default it will plot it on, on a map um, when you plot other uh, parameters like um, attitude it will it will show those plots on a line graph then we can also compare um, attitude to the true attitude using an error plot um, so we can go through and generate a, a reference attitude so you can see over this 10 second period of time we actually had very little attitude error um, talking about hundreds of a degree of drift however if we had extended the time period then that then that drift would have uh, would have grown further so again in terms of analyzing results we offer mapping plots error plots and line plots um, you can look at the summary data as well which will give you statistical data if you ran a number of runs it will show you the variation um, from run to run in terms of, of errors um, so a quick review uh, inertial navigation is a key sensor fusion technique inertial navigation algorithms are best developed with simulation first if you can't make this stuff work in simulation then you're not really ready for drive testing and flight testing we provide um, GNSS INS sim which is an online and offline simulator the github account is listed here it's open source the code is written in Python and there is an online web interface available which I just kinda ran through and gave you a tutorial on okay so now we have looked a little bit at how to simulate an inertial navigation algorithm which will be a key tool to let us developing inertial navigation and sensor fusion algorithms um, we're ready to try to run those algorithms on actual hardware so open IMU hardware is basically a highly calibrated uh, very accurate inertial navigation platforms that have been opened up so that they can host user algorithm code and there's a tool chain and uh, open source algorithm code that works as a baseline for you to use in, in your development project in your embedded navigation application the hardware for open IMU comes in a couple different flavors we have the easy module um, which has basically a spy and UART interface on it so it's a easy to integrate nine axis IMU module powered from three to five volts um, and uh, available now and um, already deployed in, in quite high volume in a number of applications we also have a CAN bus unit um, and the CAN bus unit is sealed and waterproof fully qualified for automotive environments and industrial environments including salt spray and solar radiation and all, all those good good things shock and vibration this product features both a CAN interface following the J1939 protocol as well as a RS-232 interface um, and the open IMU variation of this that will let you run your own algorithm on our CAN bus IMU uh, will be available before the end of the year in addition we have a couple of new versions of open IMU coming out uh, both smaller lower cost as well as higher performance um, so basically any code that you develop in the open IMU framework can run on these different platforms and let you trade off cost and accuracy uh, capabilities of our different hardware platforms the uh, overall platform of course is not only about hardware it also uh, consists of software so on the embedded software front we have a Visual Studio Code plugin that brings with it the compiler and tool chain and a bunch of reference source code for you to develop algorithms that run directly on top of the OpenIMU hardware and then that same developers website Asina Navigation Studio that we use for simulation is also used to connect to hardware configure it 
do data logging, charting, and plotting. You can even download pre-built binary applications um, for specific navigation functions like an AHARS function or a GPS INS app um, directly into the OpenIMU hardware straight from the website. All of this serves to just really speed up uh, development time and give you access to cutting edge uh, sensor fusion algorithms and work with a, a partner who is growing the platform and growing capabilities as well as a community that's contributing to it. So um, from a hardware point of view, all the software is available for free and open source. From a hardware point of view, uh, you do need a developer kit to actually download code into a IMU, um, and you need the IMU of, itself, of course. We have the Open IMU 300 developer kit. Um, it consists of the IMU and an eval board, um, a ST-Link JTAG pod for, for fast download and easy debugging. And it's pretty simple to get up and running, and those are available um, right now. So one of the big benefits of the OpenIMU development platform is it's platform agnostic. You can really develop anywhere. It supports Windows, Ubuntu, and Mac OS and works equally well on them. So you don't have to be tied down to a specific type of computing infrastructure in order to develop applications for OpenIMU. There's a tremendous wealth of documentation available. Um, we have a read the doc site that covers not only the installation, but the protocols, um, kind of walks through the source code um, that's available, how the algorithms work, and, and really, really complete documentation set uh, on the read the doc site. Again, you can use our Python driver to graph and chart data and, and display that through our developer website. Um, there's GitHub itself. If you want to actually um, use the code directly off GitHub, you can. Although typically, um, when you which 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 you'll we'll see in a second, when once you install the Visual Studio Code extension, all of that it's already connected to the GitHub repo, so all the code is there uh, for you. Um, and you have an ability to upload a finished app if if you want to make it available to other users. And um, we have a developer form coming soon, so we welcome customers, partners, and competitors are all welcome to contribute to. A, uh, this open source effort. So the install steps are, are pretty straightforward. I'm going to walk through them now and then I'm going to show you a setup environment and, and actually so, show you a little bit about where the source code is and um, how to compile and download an application into OpenIMU. But the rough steps are to first install Visual Studio Code um, and that's a pretty straightforward. It's uh, another huge open source project uh, presented by Microsoft. Um, gives you a really nice, lightweight, uh, multi-platform uh, code editing capability. Um, you will we'll need to install ST-Link, um, and uh, depending on the platform on the Mac, this happens automatically. On uh, Ubuntu and on Windows, you need to go through a couple steps. Windows, you just go to the ST-Link website and, and download the tools as shown here. Once you get into Visual Studio Code, you go to the extensions and you add, you look for and add the Asina extension. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and once you've done that, you're ready to go. Uh, you'll land on the OpenIMU homepage and um, you'll be ready to go and start developing. So let me just kind of show you that really quickly. Um, again, once you've installed, this is Visual Studio Code, once you've installed it, um, you can go to the extensions, you can search for you know, traditional extensions like Python, they've got lots of extensions for, for things like that, but if you say, hey, I'm interested in uh, IMUs, well, there's the Xena extension, and you simply install this extension, and that real, literally sets up and pulls example code, sets up your full environment, make sure you have a good working Python set up, it'll either leverage the Python you have on your machine, or if you don't have Python, it'll set up Python, so you're really um, quickly ready to go. Once you're there on the home page um, you can uh, open an existing project so in, in my case I have some existing IMU and AHARS projects um, or you can start a new a new project and when you start a new project you can import an example code base um, and these code bases include the algorithm code in them so that's typically where you'll want to start because that'll give you a complete uh, fresh open IMU environment with all the drivers for the sensors and the algorithms and just ready, really ready to rock and roll. So typically you would import one of these examples um, to get started and then we can take a kind of quick look around at, at the source code and the source code is really divided into two core places. You'll see a .pio lib dependencies 
Inside there is the core OpenIMU libraries, including algorithms, the RTOS, filters, math functions like Quaternion updates and matrix math, um, code for dealing with the UART and the spy port, all of that's in this, in this library uh, directory. When you go to build an app, an actual navigation app, we've kind of streamlined that down to really kind of three core files. One file is a user configuration, and this sets up any sort of customizable parameters you might have for your application, like baud rate, or if there are different types of packets your custom navigator will support, you can set those up here. Um, in terms of protocol, what messages you want to pass back and forth between the IMU and your host system, those can be, you can use our default ones, or you can extend and modify those in user messaging. And then last, but certainly not least, is the algorithm file itself. And the algorithm is a set of callbacks that will be called at 200 hertz um, with good sensor data, including the accelerometers, rates, magnetometers, and if you do have a GPS connected to the unit, the GPS data that's been pulled off the serial GPS driver. And that will pass that into um, a, a, a function that lets you then process it through an algorithm. And so um, it's pretty well documented here and pretty clear how to do that. But basically all that environment is provided for you so you really can start from these three files, just modifying code in these three files to um, build your application. Once you've built code and you're ready to compile it, you can go ahead and compile the code um, using the compile tool. And you can go ahead with this tool if you have the unit hooked up um, with the ST-Link JTAG pod to the EV board, you can go ahead and upload the code to the unit as I am showing here. So it's pretty, pretty quick and pretty easy. Let me kind of walk through those steps. Uh, again, import a example application. Um, connect the ST-Link, compile it, and download it. Um, core algorithm code is in, is in the main library tree called the OpenIMU Core Libraries. Um, again, attitude estimation, GPS integration, Kalman filter, magnetometer calibration for hard and soft iron calibration, serial and CAN bus drivers, math libraries, um, and bootloader functionality all in there. User app is where you really start um, to build your application. Um, and again, kind of three core pieces, parameters, messages, and the algorithm. You will want to give your application a name. This is a unique string that you can then use version control on um, to give your, your application a unique name um, that's separate from the kind of version string of the core hardware platform itself. Uh, there is a, a main app loop um, and there is a main OS loop. In most cases, you won't need to modify code in either of those. You can just really strictly modify these three core user files to build to build an application. So um, what we've kind of covered now is how to set up the OpenIMU development environment, adding the Xtina extension, how to import an example application, compile it, and load it on to the OpenIMU hardware platform. Next up, we'll talk a bit about how to uh, grab data from the IMU, plot it, analyze it, um, and start the iteration process of actually uh, developing a embedded navigation application. Now that we've built and downloaded a custom algorithm application into our inertial measurement unit, we can look at collecting data. Um, in terms of collecting data, we have built a Python driver system and also a web tool that allows you to easily collect plot and chart data from the unit. Um, so to get started with this driver, you'll need to install it using the easiest way to install it is to use pip install. So pip install OpenIMU will install the uh, driver uh, automatically. Um, you can alternatively clone our GitHub repo um, and then install a few additional uh, Python packages that uh, are required for our uh, Python driver. If you think you're going to modify the source code of our driver, then you would, you would want to use that installation method. However, it's worth noting our driver is customizable for different messages and packet types and commands uh, through a file called openimu.json. Um, and that turns out to make uh, most of the things you would typically want to change um, not require any code changes. And we're going to walk through that exactly. So uh, with OpenIMU, the Python driver, um, you can also connect it to our website, um, developers.asena.com, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how, how all of this works right now. 
So um, heading on back over to the Visual Studio Code, if we look down here we see this terminal window. That terminal window includes a Python capability, so if I hadn't already installed the OpenIMU driver, I would simply do pip install OpenIMU, and that would use the um, Python packaging tool to automatically pull and install the OpenIMU driver. Uh, that, since I've already done that, I can go ahead and just run the OpenIMU driver. Um, it will detect and find an IMU that's connected to it. So I have already connected the IMU to my PC um, using the USB port on the EVB. Uh, that uh, OpenIMU um, driver has a command line interface, so I can type help to get the different commands. I can get and set parameters, um, such as you know get the baud rate that we're currently com communicating at, and I can set parameters as well. I can record data directly from the command line here. I can also upgrade firmware in the unit directly from the command line here. Um, so it's pretty flexible. But one of the cool things is I can do server start and this will open up a web socket and let me communicate to the unit um, through our developer website. So again, now I'm back here on developers.asena.com and I can go to devices and go to connect and we will see that uh, my open IMU here is connected, so I can really use the website as a user interface. And I'll talk a second about how that works. Your data is not being shared publicly here on the internet. This is actually a private connection, um, just really using the web browser purely as a user interface mechanism. And again, I can update uh, parameters that, uh, that the IMU has, such as the output data rate, uh, low-pass filters, or any custom parameters like uh, for example I've added a custom parameter blah here and that custom parameter is um, specific to my IMU and I've set it inside my open IMU JSON file so this file this JSON file describes all of the options and settings that are in my IMU and you're you're able to control that um, just by um, modifying code uh, on in, in your development environment. So this JSON file, the parameters and packets are described here in this JSON file. They should match up with your embedded code. Once they match, um, your driver will automatically work with your custom unit and your uh, the, the, the user interface on the website will also be updated. So it's really flexible. I have specific capabilities that I want to add to my IMU. I just document them in this JSON file and the driver as well as the user interface will update uh, automatically for that. And we can see that here if I reload this page. Um, you can see the, the, the blah parameter that was here before. Now that's gone because I took it out of the OpenIMU JSON file. The JSON file will describe the different types of packets that it can record. And so when you, when you connect to record, it will detect then what packet it's being sent. Um, and it, it will plot that. So you can see here I've got my IMU. I'm moving moving it around, I'm getting live data out. I can go ahead and log data straight through the um, through the website and uh, collect some data here. And when I'm done with that, then that will appear in my files and I can load that data um, straight through straight through the website. It's a really flexible way to collect data um, and uh, you can do it both locally or through 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 our browser interface. How does all this work? Um, effectively, the OpenIMU uh, communicates to your laptop or PC through a serial connection um, using a USB serial chip called an FTDI chip. Um, that is then streamed into a Python driver, which can uh, parse the packets based on the data given to it in the openimu.json file. So it will find which packet it's seeing and then parse it accordingly. It can save that data locally in the data directory. Um, or if you run server start, it'll open up a private web socket, web socket connection, which you can then access from our developer website. That allows you to visually plot and chart uh, graphs, as well as use um, use a kind of graphical user interface to configure and set parameters and, and do debug work with the unit. Um, if you do use the web interface, the data is stored um, in a private repo inside of a Azure. Um, that data is private, local to you, um, not available publicly. So the OpenIMU JSON, as I've kind of talked about, is a key um, file 
that lets you reuse our driver and UI code for custom applications. So if you've built a custom application with custom packets, um, or you've done custom sensor integration, you have specific settings for that that are unique to your application, um, you don't usually have to rewrite our driver code. You can just add those um, fields into the imu.json file, and then the driver and the web UI will automatically update for those uh, features that you've added. And that um, can really speed up your development time. So what we've uh, talked about today, and then Final summary, um, OpenIMU uh, presents an advanced navigation platform for autonomous system development and makes that development faster and easier. Uh, it provides a toolkit of inertial sensor fusion algorithms, um, and these tools are open source and they're available now. So I really look forward to seeing what kinds of applications get developed, and I am happy to take some questions now. <laughs>